Well, I bought this battery about two years ago and it's been sat for a while so the the little green bit is not kind of green anymore I guess it needs you know sorting out because it's gone flat and it's handy they give you these little tabs there we are see it's nearly full that one but we, do, we don't want to overcharge it right on a serious note the plan is we'll go one two three four and i'll connect the inverter to the the middle well the inner middle one is there i'll connect it to this one it's nearest to this end and it's i've gone and got short cables i've had to order all new cables um because the ones i had are these skinny ones so i've ordered some 25 mil cable because with it being a three kilowatt inverter i have to put cable on it that could cope with that even if i never use it for three kilowatts it's got to be safe something might get plugged in accidentally that is three kilowatts and if you've connected it together with bits of string you're going to have smoke so decent cables have been ordered these will do for today because oh if the smoke who cares but i don't think they will they're going to get they might get hot they might get hot they are not rated for a three kilowatt inverter so my next job is to cobble these batteries together one to one to one to one and then feed off the center one there the bigger center one uh, I've only got jumper cables to join these, I've got no more cable so I'll get this wired up, actually no we won't, we're going to unbox the inverter well here's the inverter it's arrived, it's come let's um, cut this open with something, hang on ta-da, here's one I made earlier in the box we have oh, some cables that are kind of similar to my kit now they're thicker aren't they anyhow thicker cables so we can run this off the four batteries let's see what else we have in the goodie bag goodie box we have the remote screen for the inverter can i get this open with one hand will one hand get the job done she said uh right we have a usb cable because you always want to charge your phone we have an instruction manual in can i say in case a woman bite no i can't say that can i can't say because we all know that men never read instruction manuals that, that that's gone out the door and we have we have the remote screen and color coded green for green fuses what size are these fuses? Did they even bother to print it on them? No, obviously not. And we have this um, screen with fancy button. Oh, oh, he says. How's that work? That must have its own battery. I guess 3.6 volts is the voltage of its own battery because it's not seen any other battery. Wow. A battery backed up remote screen. Why would you want that? Why? Why battery back up a screen? It's going to be permanently wired into 12 volts. Why does it need a, a battery? Let's... <clears throat> Normally I can't get it. Yeah. anything with one hand <coughs> we have decent terminals not little plastic piddly screw things we've got terminals proper ones on metal bus bars that are going to go through the thing and power the gubbins inside cut all them screws now when you're buying I'll give you an education on buying inverters one buy them on weight like a sack of spuds decide what size inverter you want and then see what the average weight is for that kind of size inverter and then buy heavier because 
that means there's more guts in it so it can do more and um, last longer so we have one two three four five six seven eight so I'm guessing inside here there's eight MOSFETs for you know switching the electricity around and moving the little angry pixies that run down the cables and we've got a couple up there god knows why and oh we have more on this side a couple up there god knows why I'm wondering if they're for like mounting these bus bars and stabilizing them and keeping them from wobbling about who knows we have four down here uh, I don't know whether these four might be for generating the sine waves AC and the eight on the other side are for generating the high voltage or whether those eight do the sine waves and those four gen I don't know don't know but I'm guessing with eight of them there'll be probably four transformers buried in here um, you can't can we see in there not very well there's a transformer it's big and yellow and I know there'll be more than one buried in there well, there's no battery back up on this screen then I mean, it wouldn't need it would it I mean why does that other one need it who knows so what we have to do now then is connect them batteries together and then connect this to that battery and then we'll we'll test it one thing when you get a new inverter they've got big things in these called uh, capacitors and each one's like a tiny little battery it holds an electrical charge for the circuitry to circuit with they're all dead and flat and they're safe that way don't do them any harm but when you connect this to the battery and all them capacitors which are hungry because they've been starved of juice for quite a while they go <laughs> and they try to suck power in as fast as possible now that if you've got a lot of capacitors can actually take out the fuses and it's also not good to feed your capacitors that fast because they kind of get belly ache and start to swell and expand you've got to bring them up steady so don't just connect this direct to battery connect your negative or whatever to your battery bring your positive to a headlight bulb and the other side of the headlight bulb to this and you'll see the bulb will kind of come on and then fade out and it comes on bright because the capacitors are sucking all the voltage through it and it goes out because once these come up to the 12 volts to stop taking power and then you save to make a direct connection um, you can buy a special relay with a thing on for doing this and I'm kind of can't think of the name of it yeah it's something like a soft start really I don't know name will come to me I'll think of it eventually another side note to your inverter take all the washers and everything off so you've got the bare metal connector even if it's one of the little screw terminals because what you want is you want the metal of this to be in contact with that yeah they didn't exactly size these very well when they sent these did they I mean why give you <clears throat> you know 10 mil hole connectors whatever you want to call them why give you 10 mils when that's only like a six mil you know I mean it's just you know she's not happy is she you know what I mean that's not how it should be anyhow that on there all the way up and then put your washers and your nuts on because you want all the power the current going from this metal surface to that metal surface you don't want it going down the thread that's never a good thing and here's a picture of a nut and bolt where currents going down the thread and as you can see that's got hot that will happen if you make sure you've got good connection between that surface and the surface of your your spady connector thing on a side note I'm glad I've just noticed connecting these batteries up oh shit that wouldn't have been good would it these are back to front to them too hey be careful with that one 
And you and you would think of it, it's not a soft start, really. It's a pre-charge, really. And like I said, it has a bit of resistance that bypasses the contacts to give it a, a slow ramp up to 12 volts, and then you can switch in. Pre-charge, really. That's what you need. Right, let's see if this pre-charge method works. I've grabbed myself a bulb. <coughs> this is turned off. This is turned off. But now we're going to give it 12 volts from that battery through this bulb. And you watch that bulb's going to come on. Oh, well, it should have come on. But did you hear the little crack it made? It's even marked the top of the thing. So there was, there you see, there was a bit of a charge going in. So that now is pre-charged. And now, as you can see, it doesn't spark anymore. Because this is now sat at 12 volts on them capacitors inside and even though I've given them a few seconds look they've gone down again but not by a great amount they'll just drift out gradual so now I can put that terminal permanently on there and get that well screwed on temporary because I don't have everything connected yet but you see what I mean right the inaugural switch on I hope here we go, here we go, I hope this works, you know, eBay, you know, hey hey, we have 13 volts, 48 hertz, near enough, 234 volts, hey, let's plug something into this, something small, what we got, I don't know how many watts can I take, there's a 650 watt kettle there, I suppose that's good enough, in it? We'll try that. I dropped my phone a bit. Right, um, uh, I'm going to turn this off first. <laughs> I'm very trusting, eBay. Honest. Yeah. Here we go. Let's see if this comes on or if it trips. It's on. It's on, it's pulled my voltages down. 702 watts, I didn't know you got a watt display. I'm not hearing the fan going. I don't hear a fan. I'd like to have heard a fan at 700 watts. Wow. To be honest, if this can do this, that's all I need for my van. Toasted sandwiches, pot noodles. Yeah. It's buzzing. And if it means it's buzzing, that to me means this is probably not a pure sine wave inverter or even a, a modified sine wave inverter. No matter what that little graphic there says. Buzzing normally means square wave inverter. And it's getting warm. We dropped to 699. Now that's not the inverter dropping power. That's this taking less power because it's heated up and the elements resistance will have increased. So we will see that drop as it is doing. Because it's getting hot. Let's plug in the remote display and see what that has to take. There, that's the point. This will battery backed up, won't it? Does this work without anything else? Wow, it's wireless. Wow. 675 watts as it is on there. No wire in it. It's wireless. I can, can I turn the inverter on and off from here? Let's try this. No, it's not turned nothing up. Reset. Right, let's press that again. I hold it in. Nothing happens. Hold that one in. Oh, there we are. 11.9 shows me battery volts. Press it again. Internal battery volts. But it doesn't turn. Oh, hang on. Maybe it can't override that switch. Aha! 
off and back on that's how that works wow I can't believe that's wireless okay very short vid on testing this because I'm not happy yet I've not heard the fan going um, it comes with a remote and the remote believe it or not is wireless look at that no connection and I can turn it off from here wireless how's that it's brilliant right that was 675 watts this kettle says it is 650 let's just put that on I've no water in that kettle either but let's turn it on with 1200 watts connected and just see if it does 1200 watts press on he says pressing on come on 1200 watts wow I am now happy with this inverter because I will never need to pull more than that wattage in a van and I'm only running off one battery at the moment alright it's a bloody good battery but one battery and one kettle running and boiling oops and tripped out and now that's got up and that's tripped out so my wattage has gone to zero but this isn't warm there's no heat coming out of it and the fans not started um, I'm quite chuffed with this I need to test it on some pure sine wavey type equipment like a microwave oven and a couple of motorized things and um, I know someone said can I try it with a fridge um, I don't know if Tina will be happy if I go take the fridge out the kitchen and bring it in the van but <laughs> we'll see maybe I could just run a big extension cable to the kitchen I really get pissed off with this friggin sliding door why does it have to be inset so the fucky water comes inside the van anyhow bigger kettle let's go with a bigger kettle we're on let's just check the small kettle there's a small one which it says is a 650 and 625 turn him off turn on the big kettle oh 1800 1900 and we have water boiling in the kettle it was already hot and there we are 1800 watts it's pulled my batteries down to 10.9 but 1800 watt kettle let's give it some ammo let's put this other kettle back on 18650 would be 2450 oh don't like that that could be the low battery voltage but yeah the voltage has dropped turn the big kettle off I guess once that's tripped it keeps annoying you uh, let's connect up more batteries more jump leads all four batteries let's go for some 1800 I think it said they're not dropped as far then the other kettle there's 2276 and still this thing ain't got its fan going and it's stone cold so either the heat's not being transferred to the case and everything inside's melting or it's so bloody efficient it's not getting warm oh something tripped out oh yeah there's no water in that kettle yeah but the other one's still going
I did I see smoke? I can smoke see smoke. Smoke or steam. That's smoke. I can oh, smell oh, smoke. Oh, Turn off your off. thing. Oh, smoke's coming out of it. I wonder if they forgot to wire up that fan. Yeah, I think this one gets sent back to eBay. I was happy with it till now.